On the humid and hot bank of the Gambia River, a man was sold. He was crowded into the dark hole of a huge ship headed for North America. When the man saw sunlight again, he was on the swampy lands of Southern Virginia. The man was purchased and given the first name Harry and the last name of his enslaver, George Washington. In 1763, George Washington founded the Dismal Swamp Company. The purpose of the company was to drain the Virginia wetlands and grow hemp for export. George purchased Harry to work in these swamps. When the Dismal Swamp Company failed in draining the wetlands, Harry was moved to George's estate in Mount Vernon. Harry listened as George and his friends discussed liberty for all Americans. Harry watched as the American revolutionaries organized into an army. For freedom, the soldiers would yell. The enslaved people of Mount Vernon whispered amongst themselves, does this mean freedom for us? Some would say, if it's liberty and justice for all, then this means us too. But Harry wasn't sure. He saw George buy more slaves. He heard George talk about purchasing even more slaves. We aren't going to be freed, Harry told the black Americans of Mount Vernon. That's not possible, exclaimed one woman. What about what Mr. Washington says about freedom and liberty? Even so, Harry said, it doesn't mean it's for us. Some of the other enslaved men agreed with Harry. They began to talk about running away. In 1775, the British Crown issued the proclamation, if any slaves fight for England, they will be freed. A year later, Harry ran away and joined the Black Pioneers, an all-black regiment that was part of the British Artillery Unit. Harry quickly rose through the ranks and became a corporal. George was furious that Harry and 18 others had run away. Although George was busy fighting the British, he still found time to hire a slave catcher. Harry was never caught, but it was a difficult life. Many of the black pioneers died of disease or in battle. At the end of the war, Harry found safe haven in the British zone of New York, where he awaited his fate. The Americans demanded the return of all slaves as part of the peace treaty. George insisted that the British return all of his slaves. However, the British Crown kept its promise to Harry, and Harry, along with his wife Jenny and 405 black men, women, and children, set sail for Nova Scotia, Canada. Unfortunately, Nova Scotia was not the promised land that Harry had hoped for. Instead, the white settlers horribly underpaid the black workers. The land was rocky and barren and difficult to cultivate. In 1791, Harry and his wife finally returned to Africa. The British Crown had colonies in Sierra Leone and promised the black settlers 20 acres for every man, 10 acres for every woman, and 5 acres for every child. Harry and his wife started their own farm, but their troubles were far from over. The British imposed a special tax on the black settlers, which kept them in perpetual debt to the British Sierra Leone Company. This tax was similar to the American version of sharecropping. Harry, now age 60, along with other black settlers, protested this tax. The protesters were arrested and charged with open and unprovoked rebellion. They were banished from the community for life, forced across the Sierra Leone River to the Bullum Shore. This is where all written accounts of Harry Washington end. We hope that Harry finally found the freedom he was looking for and lived out his last days in peace. Thanks for watching Deeper Than Red. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media.